the continent of Mu and Easter Island. Before leaving the Doku, Tao fitted a mask on my head. A mask that was different from the one I had worn previously. I was able to see colors that were much more vivid and much more luminous. How do you feel in the new walkie, Michael? Do you find the light tolerable? Yes, it's fine. It's so beautiful and I feel so. With that, I collapsed at Tao's feet. She took me in her arms and carried me to the flying platform. I awoke in my docu, quite astonished. My shoulder was hurting. Quite instinctively, I put my hand to the pain and grimace. I'm really sorry, Michael, but it was necessary. There was just a hint of remorse in Tao's expression. What happened to me? Let's say that you find it, although the word is not quite appropriate. Rather, you were overwhelmed with beauty. Your new walkie allows 50% of the vibration of color on our planet to pass, whereas your former walkie should do all but 20%. Only 20%? That's incredible. All those marvelous colors I could see, the butterflies, the flowers, the trees, the ocean, no wonder I was overcome. I remember during a journey I met from France to New Caledonia, we called in at the island of Tahiti. While there, I toured the island with my family and friends in a hired car. The islanders were delightful and made such a charming picture with their straw huts constructed on the banks of lagoons amidst Bunga and Via, hibiscus and extras, red, yellow, orange and purple, surrounded by well-kept lawns in, and sadded by coconut trees. The backdrop to these scenes was provided by the blue of the ocean. We spent all day touring the island and I described it in my journal as having been an entire day of inebriation for my eyes. I was indeed intoxicated by the beauty around me, and yet, you know, I admit that all was nothing compared with the beauty here on your planet. Tao had listened to my description with marked interest, smiling all the while. She placed her hand on my forehead and said, Rest now, Michael. Later, you will feel better and will, and will be able to come with me. I fell asleep immediately and I slept peacefully without dreaming, I think for about 24 hours. When I awoke, I felt rested and refreshed. Tao was there and Latoli and Biastra had joined her. They had regained their normal size and I commented on the fact straight away. Little time is required for such a metamorphosis, Michael explained Biastra. But that is not important. Today we are going to show you something of our country and introduce you to some very interesting people. Natalia approached me and touched my shoulder with her fingertips just where Tao had bruised me. The pain instantly, the pain vanished and I felt quivers of well-being run through my whole body. She returned my smile and handed me my new mask. I still found that outside I had to squint against the light. Tao gestured to me indicated that I should climb on the Latibok, as our flying platform was called. The others chose to fly, the others chose to fly independently, fluttering about our vehicle, 
as inhabitants seem perpetually fluttering about our vehicle, as though playing a game, and no doubt they were. On this planet, the inhabitants seem perpetually happy. The only ones I have found to be serious, in fact, even a little severe. Despite of the air of benevolence, were the seven tardy. We flew at high speed, several meters above the water. Although my curiosity was constantly aroused, I often had to close my eyes to allow, allow to recover from the brightness. Still, it appeared I was going to become accustomed to it. I wonder how I could cope, though, if it occurred to Tao to give me a mask which permitted 70% of the light to penetrate or even more. We rapidly approached the coast of the mainland, where waves were breaking over the rocks of green, black, orange and gold. The iridescence of the water crashing against the road, rocks under the perpendicular rays of midday sun created a memorably lovely effect. A band of light and color was formed 100 times more crystalline than a rainbow on Earth. We rose to an altitude of about 200 meters and proceeded to travel over the continent. Tao flew us over a plane on which I could see animals of all sorts. Some were two legs and resembled little ostriches. Others were four-legged creatures, similar to mammoths, but twice as big. I also watched cows graze side by side with hippopotamuses. The cows were so similar to those we have on Earth I couldn't help but remark it on it to Tao, pointing as I did so at a particular herd, just like a, an excited child at the zoo. She laughed heartily. Why shouldn't we have cows here, Michael? Look over there and you'll see donkeys and their giraffes, although they are somewhat taller than on earth. See how lovely those horses are as they run together. I was thrilled, but wasn't I constantly thrilled by this experience? Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. What really rendered me speechless to the amusement of my friends was the sight of horses bearing the heads of very pretty women some blonde, others auburn or brown or even some with blue hair. As they galloped, they could often soar for tens of meters. Adjects, in fact, they had wings folded back against their bodies, which they made use of from time to time. Something like the flying fish which follow or precede ships. They lift their heads to see us and try to rival the speed of the latibok. Tower reduced speed and altitude enable us to approach within several meters of them. There were more surprises ahead of me as some of these horse women cried out to us in a language that was recognizably human. My three companions answered in the same language, and the exchange was obviously a pleasant one. We didn't linger long at, a low, at that low altitude, however, as some of the horse women soared to such heights, they almost touched our vehicle, thereby risking injury to themselves. The plane we flew over was, in places, embossed with small knolls, 
all of about the same size. I remarked on them and Biastra explained that millions of years ago these knolls, knolls had been volcanoes. The vegetation below us had none of the exuberance of the forest I had experienced on my arrival. On the contrary, here the trees were grouped in small stands, reaching no more than 25 meters in height. As we passed, large white birds took flight by the handlers, only to land again a safe distance away. A wide water course flowed to the horizon, dissecting the plain with its lazy wanderings. I could make out some small docos grouped together on a bend of the river. Tao guided the Latibok above the river, reducing altitude to water level as we approached the settlement. We landed on a small square between two docos and were immediately surrounded by the inhabitants. They didn't scramble or push to get near us, rather they stopped what they were doing and calmly approach us. They form a circle large enough to be comfortable and for all to have equal opportunity to see an alien face to face. Again, it struck me that all these people all seem to be of the same age. Apart from half, about half a dozen that could have been older. Age here did not detract but added a quality of surprising nobility. nobility. It had also been struck by the absence of children on the planet and yet in this settlement and among the crowd that approached I saw six or seven of them. They were charming and appeared to be quite level-headed for children. According to Tao, they could have been eight or nine years old. Since my arrival on Chauba, I have not yet had occasion to meet so great a number of these people. Glanced, glancing around the circle, I could appreciate a calmness and reserve about them as well as the great beauty in their faces that I'd grown to expect. There was a strong resemblance between them, as if they were all brothers and sisters, and yet isn't that our first impression when we encounter a group of blacks or Asians together? In fact, the same physical variety in facial features existed among these people, as exist were races on earth. In height they varied from 280 to 300 centimeters, the bodies being some well proportioned, they were a pleasure to behold, neither too muscly, not too pony, and without deformity of any kind. The hips were somewhat larger than you would expect in a man, but then I've been told that some of them gave birth to children. All possessed magnificent heads of hair, most of a golden blonde color, others platinum blonde or coppery blonde and occasionally a bright chestnut color. They were also sewn like Tao and Biastra with a fine down of hair on the upper lip, but apart from this, these people had absolutely no other body hair. This is not, of course, an observation that I made at the time, but one which I made later, when I had occasion to see from quite near a group of naked sunbathers. <laughs> 